No, I, I said I'd only, I'm only interested in uh, uh, sports franchises in city that I either is in my backyard or a city very close by that I do a lot of business in. That's only four cities, Seattle, uh, Vancouver, Edmonton, and Calgary. And in the sports franchises are, have some peculiar advantages at this time. Number one, you hope to make money on them, and I think some of them, they're going to make money on them. Two, there's a good depreciation uh, allowance in them. Three, there's an appreciation in the value of it. Uh, for example, I firmly believe the Seattle franchise is worth more like 20 in two years or three years from now. Lastly, you, make f you have fun at it. So if you have those first three and have fun at it at the same time, it's uh, a little why instead of making shoes or windows or whatever the heck. The most immediate task at hand for Scalvania, if indeed he has a list of priorities, because so much is done simultaneously, is to get enough $50 checks to show the NBA that Vancouver will support a pro basketball franchise. Well, I applied uh, officially with a deposit and a, a fairly sophisticated proposal uh, for an NBA franchise uh, in Vancouver about a month and a half ago. They then uh, had their expansion committee uh, meet with myself uh, about uh, 10 days ago or a week ago, in which we went through the application and they outlined and the, the main three reasons that had to be ful fulfilled to get an expansion team here. And they are in order, uh, a facility. You can't uh, play unless you got a place to play and the Coliseum is totally adequate. Never mind the fact that ultimately maybe you can play in the, uh, in the covered dome, uh, which I believe is being uh, designed to accommodate basketball. Secondly, they required ownership of, of uh, some quality uh, and management, and uh, I think uh, they were satisfied to that effect, and I think they've said that. Thirdly, uh, are there any basketball fans in Vancouver that will support it? Uh, this would be the NBA team really for Canada, never mind Vancouver, in the same way that I guess the Montreal, Montreal Expos when they first were formed, they were really the Canadian baseball uh, team. The, and that, to that degree, they initially suggested that perhaps I should just go out with a team of people and canvass the corporations. And I'm not certain if putting the arm on corporations and friends and or relatives is gives you a serious or proper indication of uh, the true basketball fans in Vancouver. Uh, I then said, well, I'll do that. But in addition to that, I'd like to place an ad in the newspaper. Uh, so that's the origin of the ad in the newspaper, is I really want uh, the basketball fans to write in without arm twisting, without conning or convincing, or whatever has to be done to sell season tickets. I was criticized about the small booth in the Georgia. Well, that was just a token thing to uh, answer questions if uh, any are there. But the main function is I'd like people to fill out those coupons in the newspaper and mail it in if they want basketball. Mm -hmm. What I need really is in the, of the order of perhaps uh, six, seven, eight thousand seats. Ten thousand would be fantastic. I would, I would have to say that it's like 98 percent if we had 10,000 season tickets or 10,000 applications in. The decision on the NBA bid will be made known after a meeting of the team owners, which will be held just prior to the February 1st All-Star Game in Cleveland. But the owners will be easier persuaded to go along with the expansion if the special committee passes the motion to go to 24 teams. First of all, you have to uh, convince the expansion co uh, committee. If they approve of it, then it goes to the uh, board meeting, the full 20, uh, 23 existing uh, clubs. Does it have to be unanimous by the eight members? Not at all. I, I believe it's, it's two-thirds majority. Uh, what are your chances, do you feel, uh, having talked to those people? It's not in my hands. It's in 10,000 season ticket holders in Vancouver. That's the decision that's going to be made. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that hockey and basketball and indoor soccer can all take place at the same time and prior to BC Place being ready all at the Pacific Coliseum? Look at Seattle. Uh, look at Edmonton. Edmonton has 600,000 people. They have 60,000 season tickets between two franchises, the hockey and football. Mm -hmm. So uh, proportion that's one in 10. Here in the Lower Mainland, that's only like one in uh, 80 or something like that, or one in 100. 
all the franchises uh, are more or less successful in Seattle. Uh, baseball is struggling, but only to due to the abysmal performance on the field. The newest club in the National Basketball Association are the Dallas Mavericks, and Scalvania parallels his cost and structure to their formation. As far as the dollars to buy them, I will only tell you what happened in, in Dallas, which is well known and people know about it. I can't comment on the dollars for Vancouver at, at their request, but Dallas uh, paid $12 million for the franchise. For that, they got one player from the 22 clubs, a full complement of players, and they had some draft choice considerations. So this one in Vancouver is called inflation, I guess, so maybe it's more. What's your next step as far as basketball? Anything more you can do regarding uh, getting that off the ground and, and moving? Well, I'm really not, I don't want to arm twist. I want people of their own volition to fill those applications in and send them in. Uh, that is, if they want basketball, if they want NBA basketball, it's not in my hands. I don't, you know, uh, we're, believe it or not, there's already a semi-professional basketball team in Canada, whether you know it or not. They have just formed and have had their first game about 10 days ago in Lethbridge. It plays against, it's in the Continental League, and it plays against cities like Anchorage, Alaska, and Honolulu, Hawaii, and we have a Canadian team in Lethbridge city of about 40,000 or 50,000, but that's sort of historically has been kind of a hotbed of basketball for years and years down there. But uh, in fact, when I was in the NBA meetings, the, the commission hadn't even heard of Lethbridge. Where's Lethbridge? <laughs> for some time, Scalvania has been trying to purchase the Seattle Mariners of the American Baseball League, but it's not an easy purchase for a non-resident, as Edward DeBartolo found out when seeking the Chicago White Sox. The American League has given me their conditions for approving a franchise in uh, Seattle. You know, to buy a, a baseball team, a major league baseball team in the States, is like uh, buying a piece of the American flag. It's very difficult and awkward. A guy like the Bartolo, who has now been turned down a second time, although he's trying again in December, whose net worth is supposedly a half a billion or more, and he's a very successful, wealthy businessman, came out in the statement uh, on Friday say, to say, A, He's going to move to Chicago, so he's no longer absentee. Guy like that moving to Chicago. Secondly, he's going to sell his three racetracks. For a guy to make a major commitment like that, to be able to spend $20 million to buy a baseball team, shows you what ex some people, the extent they go to, to buy a baseball team. Scalvania's latest deal is the buying up of 50.1% of the baseball Canadians to give him 100%. So that leaves the man who made the Canadians, Harry Ornest, with nothing. Well, maybe. There is speculation Harry will be a part of the Seattle Mariners bid. Uh, the league's requirements for me to buy to get into Seattle are threefold. Um, one, they wanted some local participation and ownership, and uh, I've done that. Two, uh, they wanted 60% equity shown, uh, and I've arranged that with some partners. The last one, they wanted someone, not me, I mean, they, they'll go, A, I'm involved in perhaps too many franchises, and B, uh, maybe it'll be easier to get through the American League proposal if it isn't Scalvania, I suppose. Uh, they wanted someone perhaps to go to the forefront to manage, run the club, direct the club. That's the, has that's the hang up at this stage. I don't have that, uh, that body yet. Uh, and the, there has not been an official application yet made to the league. To the owners, there has been an offer that has been accepted by the owners but it's the formal application of the league which is very extensive and has to be very extensive. Lee McPhail, president of the American League, cited Scalvania's dealings in Indianapolis as a stumbling block. Scalvania owned the racers of the old WHA and had to fold the franchise which obviously didn't have too many fans, but enough to hold a grudge. Well, I understand the mayor of Indianapolis and some concerned citizens uh, I think sent some letters to the American League owners uh, and the same people sent the same letters to the National Hockey League owners prior to that vote and to the NASL owners prior to that vote but it was apples and a apples and oranges comparison so mm -hmm. it's a it's a scene that I'd rather not I'd rather forget and not talk about other than the fact that there is a pending uh, class action suit still in Indianapolis that's on, on the in the courts I suppose I said things about the city of Indianapolis that I shouldn't have publicly uh, when I left. But that central Midwest U.S. Uh, is a little strange. You know, they'll 
the newspapers and the sports pages. The first three pages will be Roosevelt High School basketball team ekes out win over Jefferson High, and then it's high school football, and, and then college football, and college basketball. And then in the fourth page, the Indianapolis Racers is about an inch saying that they're in the playoffs against Edmonton or whatever. So they have their loyalties and or things are a little strange down there. Tuesday, the National Hockey League opens its winter meetings in Palm Beach, Florida. And as an owner of the Calgary Flames, Scalbania will be there. Well, the two, two main items, or of many items, the two, uh, one is the realignment. We're talking of the realignment. I, from Calgary, and I think Vancouver, uh, Griffiths himself, who was on the plane with me to Calgary yesterday, said that uh, he prefers the balance schedule. And I prefer the balance schedule, at least for a couple more years. Uh, Calgarians haven't seen uh, that many of the teams. And it's easier to sell season tickets in twos if you have the, the balance schedule. Mm -hmm. So that's one that's going to be uh, talked about a lot, and that'll be a long time arguing about that. Secondly, there's uh, talk of a, uh, this Meadowlands expansion for this franchise for Meadowlands in uh, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and whether one, to move somebody there or expand or whatever, and that's part of the discussion. Scalbania is a shrewd businessman and has made real estate his prime interest outside of sports. He admits it has not all been roses. There was a particular turning point is that I ended up making some money in real estate that enabled me to do things other than in real estate because I'm not sure if there's a great sense of satisfaction or gratification in buying one building and billing it or selling it and mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, I, I, you know, I'd rather do something else and continue doing something else. What was initially, say, your first deal that, that got you started and got the ball rolling? Don't pick on one. I can't even be specific on one item or one deal. I've, I've done a lot, but uh, it's not that I make a lot of money on these deals, and in hell, in a lot of cases I don't. Uh, it's just that I do a lot of them, and maybe some of the ones uh, that I've made money on have covered some of the losses that I've had, and boy, I've had a lot of losses. <laughs> How is it working out now? Do you, do you figure you're having more winners than losers? Well, real estate is a, one of the reasons I like real estate. It's sort of a portable business. In other words, as it was in Vancouver here, it was bad in Vancouver three years ago or four years. There's a flat plateau. Or there was no appreciation. So what did you do? Moved to Alberta mm -hmm. uh, and, and did well in Alberta. Alberta peaked. Well, went down to California. So in that sense, uh, to be successful in real estate, you need a you know, phone booth or an airline, a credit card, and uh, you don't need much of a staff. Uh, and it's a nice kind of an easy way to earn a living. You don't, it's not that if you have a shoe plant down in Richmond, you can't move that shoe plant. You gotta make shoes down there. And it's, it's not, a, not a, as I say, I like the term portable. Real estate is a portable business. You have a lot of things happening simultaneously. Are there enough hours in the day for you? No, and many things I'm doing badly. I admit, frankly, uh, perhaps I, uh, I'm doing some things too quickly and doing too many things. And perhaps I'm lacking in some management staff and dollars. I'm always lacking dollars, you know. Of the time of my life, four or five percent of my time is to do these deals. The other 95 percent, I'm trying to find the money to do the deals I just did. Mm -hmm. You always have a lot of irons in the fire at the same time? I have a great inability to say no <laughs> to deal. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's your ambition eventually? What, say, if you had to set a goal for yourself, you're accomplishing a lot quickly now, but anything uh, in the long run that you really want to accomplish? Yeah, have more time to lie on the beach in Hawaii or something like that. Have more time to train for a marathon properly instead of the last time where I broke down. <laughs> I need 90 days to train for a marathon. I think I need more time. Next time. Are you still active in marathon running? Oh, I still run a lot. still play a lot of racquetball as well. Not as much as I'd like to. Nelson Scalbania, owner of the NHL Calgary Flames, the NASL Calgary Boomers, the Vancouver Baseball Canadians, the New Westminster Bruins Junior Hockey Club, and part of the Calgary Wranglers WHL team is hoping to add the NBA and Major League Baseball to his portfolio.